It is IAE 2953, and while we get all these new ships to get hyped about, I want to have another look at last year's big announcement, the RSI Galaxy. Therefore, in this video, I will tour the outside and revisit the specs and basic information about it, as well as tour the inside for the very first time. The outside is based on the official hull of your model, so the scale and everything should be as accurate as it gets for now. But the inside is completely built by me. I did match the official blueprint as close as possible, but at the end of the day it involves a lot of speculation and these concept sales usually evolve further during development and end up differently, so please keep that in mind. Lastly, I will be recording all of this in VR, which doesn't make a difference in the final YouTube video, but it means I get a much better feeling for scale and might determine things that don't really fit or make sense scale-wise. With all that out of the way, let's get started. So, the RSI Galaxy is described as a multi-role vessel with true modularity. What that means is that it has a big room in the lower half of the ship that can be exchanged to make it either a, quote, long-haul freighter or an all-in-one refinery. More modules to be announced later. Here is my only two cents for now. It does not look like either of those. It does not even look modular like it has a multi-role purpose. It looks like a warship. It looks like a small Star Destroyer. Most people seem to love the design, and I like it too, but where most Star Citizen designs make it easy to see the role of a ship at first glance, this one looks like the one thing it is not. But at least it looks great, so let's continue. The exchangeable module is here in the middle. Some of them will have an elevator, or at least a door, but I also suspect a smaller crew elevator around here somewhere. This is missing its landing gear right now, but without, it is about mm, 4 meters, 4.5 meters off the ground now where the elevator would be. These guns are over 7 meters long. It has 3 remote turrets, 2 on the sides and 1 under the nose, all 3 having 2 size 5 hardpoints, as well as 2 missile launchers with 4 size 2s each. In some ways it's described as something of a bigger brother of the constellation, and even though it only is a little more than double the length at 110 meters, it looks a lot bigger, less fragile and more intimidating. One of its biggest features is the rear-facing hangar. We will have a closer look at that from the inside later. There won't be any rear-facing ramp. And I checked right now here without the landing gear. The floor of the hangar is at 6 meters from the floor. So this ledge here is about 5.5, a, a little more than 5.5 meters high. So unless some kind of ladder is added, you will not be able to enter this on foot. Now I want to walk on the top of the ship to get a better feel for the size and height here. As I said, in its current state it's 110 meters long, 60 meters wide and 14 meters high without any gear. That makes it almost the exact same length and height of a Drake Caterpillar. What is very apparent from up here, after having seen the rest from below, is that this ship has barely any windows. You'll notice that from the inside. But you can have a look into the mess hall from here. As well as into the corridor connecting the airlock to the cockpit. This airlock here is also from where we will start the inside tour in just a minute. Let's talk about the when for a second. As usual, we don't know anything for sure, but there are two pieces of information from this year's CitizenCon to get an idea. The Zeus Mark II, where they tried to have a similar development time and structure as the Crusader Spirit, which means it would be available around this time next year, as well as that the remaining RSI capital ships will be developed one after the other to share assets in between them and save time. With the Polaris coming first, then the Galaxy and 
than Perseus. So the Zeus, even though not a capital ship, will probably share assets with this family too. Look at the walls and doorways for example. But even if it does and the Polaris will be worked on at the same time as the Zeus, it's not likely that we get both next year. And only after those two, the galaxy will be continued. So I would not expect the galaxy much earlier than probably late 2025, even if the shared work of the RSI family would save a lot of work. And that's a big if. But now let's head inside. We enter through the docking port on the upper floor and after a short corridor we have the first of only a few windows. As well as three options, straight ahead a lift that brings us to the lower deck. To the right are the living quarters, but first let's go to the bridge. We have four seats here, two elevated ones on each side. The visibility is not the greatest, honestly, but I do like these slightly elevated positions. Feels like a very safe place to work. The next station is centered and the visibility gets better. And in the very front, one step lower, is the final seat. From here visibility is arguably pretty good for the size and role of this ship, especially if you look at a constellation. But especially when comparing it to a constellation I would be prepared that these cockpit struts get a lot more detailed and with that more obstructing and distracting in the final design. But already in true constellation fashion the little cockpit struts we have here are exactly on eye level, which is annoying with so much space to find a better solution. There's only a little obstructions on the sides from these, uh, I assume, protective hull plates. But it is nice how much you can see over your shoulders. So I would say for warship, visibility is pretty great. For a exploration ship, it's okay-ish. So for the multi-role purpose of the ship, it seems like a good compromise between safety and visibility. That said, I would have liked some more visibility, especially for the people that don't sit in the very front. Which with the current design is not really possible because there's this massive steel thing around the cockpit here. Leaving the bridge, we find ourselves in the habitation area next. There is a dining and kitchen area with a space for four people. as well as a small lounge area with a space pool table. Thanks to the big skylights, this could be one of the nicest places on this ship. Even though, I'll say it again, with a ship that fills a lot of roles, except a military one, I would have loved some more windows here. This recess here would feel perfect for another window. But what you can't see is that between this wall and the outside hull of the ship are another 8 meters of steel and cables or components, but nothing you could enter in any way. Which actually feels like a lot of wasted space. I have already checked what you could do with this area to improve that, but I will explore and test my ideas and suggestions at the end of the video. Let's continue with the tour for now. Right now this already is a nice place. Further to the back we have more crossing corridors. To the very front we have the captain's quarters, which are nice because you get your own office space. From which you can look straight through to the bridge, if the doors are open. Maybe even shout some commands. As well as your own little bedroom. The crew bedrooms are located along this corridor. with a fifth one around this corner. They all share the same layout with a bed and a small table, but since the concepts make it impossible to guess how industrial or luxurious these might end up, I did not waste much attention on these. Now to not get lost in these corridors, everything here is pretty much symmetrical, so we have four rooms on this side and two on this one. 
one being connected to the captain's office and one being separate. But no matter which side you choose to go from here, you will end up in the same place. If I follow this corridor and turn right at the end, I would go back to the crew quarters. But before I do that, we have a station here and the same on the opposite side. I would assume it is an engineering station, even though its position and orientation would line up with the big turrets on the side of the ship. But given where we are in the ship, I would assume it's for engineering. By the way, this is another place where a window would be nice. And this time we are close enough to the outside hull. And the positioning feels ideal for a window. With that, it could actually be a viable position for the turret operator. As with the kitchen window, I would explore how that could look like later. Looking further to the rear, this corridor leads to an elevator to the lower deck. But as it is more or less symmetrical, let's go to the other side first. In the middle here, you can have a great view down into the hangar. And while this position is empty on the blueprint, uh, one artwork shows some screens and someone working here. And it would be a great position to both supervise landing ships or maybe control a tractor beam for cargo. I don't know if this hangar has a ship tractor beam or if that is exclusive to the hangar module. And you would have to load this with the handle tools. But it would be a great position for the controls. Even though this place feels a little exposed for any kind of administrative work right in the middle of this hallway. I hope there will be some doors not currently visible in the concept. But there wouldn't be much space behind me to extend this room to the back to have a nice commando room here. As the captain's quarters are right behind this wall. Now here we have the other station, the way back to the crew quarters. And the lift downstairs. We have two more windows overlooking the hangar on either side. The opposite side shows a ladder too, so I expect these to either not be symmetrical and having a ladder on one side in case of emergencies, or having ladders built into both elevators somehow. Now this room does not show any detail on either the blueprints or the artworks. I would assume it houses most of the components, because it would be relatively easy to get replacement parts delivered into the hangar and you would not have to carry them through the whole ship. And then we enter the rear-facing hangar of the galaxy. First up, I'm not sure about this, but it looks like there are no doors here, just some kind of force field to keep you safe inside. Because currently there's no space on the model to actually put the doors anywhere. Now the space itself. This hangar can officially only carry 64 SCU of cargo, so two 32 containers on either side, even though you could fit a lot more. But there's no cargo grid to support this, so if you like your freight secured, 64 SCU is the maximum. This means that even with cargo, there's always enough space for an XXS sized ship, so a Pisces or an MPUV. But even an Aurora would technically be 2 meters too long. It could technically work, I'm not sure what happens if a part of the ship hangs out. But officially, XXS ships only, especially if you intend to directly spawn one here from the terminal in the future. There will also be no ramp or lift at the rear. To load vehicles you would have to equip the hangar module to have a lift or use a big tractor beam. Now just a quick test if you didn't care about cargo grids or something like that. I could fit seven crates next to each other and easily a third one on top. That's 21 crates in total or 672 SCU. I mean there's still room on the top but that would be very hard to reach. Also, I was wondering, just theoretically, if I could fit two auroras in here, and I think it actually works. Now, don't get your hopes up too high. I think the way I recreated this whole thing, there's a margin of at least 10% in size for error. And these two fit by, like, a few centimeters, so this would be really hard to pull off without colliding and exploding. This would also mean that you would have to park parts of it in the doorway here and as we've seen with the spirit I think it's likely that they put some beams or something in there to prevent you from fitting stuff in there that that you're not supposed to fit in there 
and even though you could technically still exit these auroras, it's like a really tight situation. I don't think that's... I wouldn't count on this actually working, even though it's quite cool. Now behind this door would be one of the three available modules available with the Galaxy. But interestingly, you can also use it without a module equipped. Let me quote the Q&A. If you have no module, the Galaxy has an empty void area with a shell to keep the hull airtight, allowing you to traverse from the hangar to the rest of the ship. As it's simply an empty space, you could put stuff in there, but with a lack of cargo plates, it would be subject to all the normal risks of unsecured cargo. So since the blueprint is actually not showing the cargo module, I assume this means you get the same space you would get with the cargo module, just without the elevator or cranes or tractor modules. This honestly surprises me a bit because it feels like you'd get a lot for free. Or not very much if you buy the cargo module. I would honestly not be surprised if the placeholder module would just give you a narrow corridor to get from the rear to the front. I will talk more about the advantages of the modules and the available space you get here in part 2, but if this is the same size as the cargo module, you could officially fit another 512 SCU. At the end of the room, in any configuration, we get this small control room overlooking whatever module is installed. And from here we enter another small corridor with the elevator we saw in the very beginning when we entered through the airlock. Further to the front we have a room containing crew lockers and suits and I would also expect some weapon racks. I didn't put too much work into this room. But what I noticed at this point is that the blueprint does not contain a single shower, bathroom or toilet throughout the whole ship. And lastly, this room is described as only housing components. But it looks like there is a smaller lift for people here, even though nothing is visible from the outside. But it would be weird if you could only get to a planet's surface with one of the elevator modules attached, so this is my prediction of the internal layout. And that is where I'm going to end part one of the tour. It has been long enough already and when I did the Crusader Spirit walkthrough I got some very nice questions and idea I could try out, like what to fit inside. So while I have already prepared the tour through the three modules, I'm going to wait a few days to get some of your ideas in. So with that, see you on the verse. Oh, in the meantime, feel free to check out my other series where I design and build my own ship.